What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 13 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API. So guys, in the part 12 video of this tutorial series, I have covered Lambda Authorizer and we had used the simple response mode to secure the API endpoints. So guys, now in this tutorial, I will take you through on how to use Lambda Authorizer using IAM policy as a response mode to secure our API endpoints. So here we are going to use the same configuration that we have used or configured in the previous tutorial. So guys, now if you look at this flow that we have discussed in the previous tutorial, so if you look at the Lambda authorizer, so in that case, what was happening is that the Lambda authorizer was returning the Boolean value that whether the given user is authorized or not to invoke or access the said resource, right? So that was using the simple response mode. So guys, now if we use the IAM policy as a response mode, then instead of this Boolean response, right instead of this boolean value what lambda authorizer will return is it will return the iam policy that is this one which is highlighted in the blue color so this is basically the standard policy where we have the principal id policy document version statement so here we have to focus on these three things that is uh, action effect and resource so action is basically uh, what permission or what action you want to allow or deny so here in our case we want to may be allowed to invoke the API and we want to deny to invoke the API, right? So that's why the action is kind of execute hyphen API colon invoke. And then we have effect. So effect will define whether to allow that action or not. So that is allow or deny. And then we have resource. So within resource, we have to define the ARN of the resource uh, that we want to allow or deny to the user. And if you want to pass on any uh, additional parameters, then you can pass it as a part of the context. So this is a very uh, basic, simple IAM policy that we are going to return from the Lambda authorizer instead of the Boolean value while we use the IAM policy as a response mode. Right guys, so let's get started. So I will navigate to API gateway. So here I have the HTTP API open. I will click on routes. So as I mentioned here, we are going to reuse the most of the configuration from the previous tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we had configured the Lambda authorizer for this get method under slash test resource. So what we are going to do is we are going to select the get method and we will say configure authorizer. So here we have all the details of the authorizer. Now we want to change the response mode, right? So this is the response mode that is being set to simple. Now we are going to click on edit authorizer. We are not going to touch anything except the response mode and the invoke permission. Correct. So within response mode, we will select IAM policy this time. We are going to leave the identity sources, payload format version, Lambda function name and the authorizer name as it is. Now here, if you see within invoke permission, while I clicked on the edit authorizer, this is disabled. So we need to enable it so that we can grant API gateway permission to invoke the Lambda function that we have defined over here. That is Lambda auth. And once this configuration is done, you need to click on save. Now this configuration is saved successfully. And if you want to deploy it to the manual version, then click on deploy, select the manual stage. So that is version one in my case, and I will say deploy to stage. Now in terms of API gateway or the API endpoint, we have did all the configuration. If you want to uh, refer that how we had configured uh, this authorizer, then you can follow the part 12 video of this tutorial series. Now as a next step, we are going to modify the code within the Lambda function that is Lambda auth that we have configured or defined in the previous tutorial because at this point of time, this Lambda function is returning the Boolean value. Now we need to configure this Lambda function to return the IAM policy instead of the Boolean value. So uh, here we have the condition that is if event of headers within authorization token double equal to secret code, then we want to allow if this condition evaluates to false else we want to send the default response. So what I will do is I will just remove the else. So by default here, we will uh, deny the user to access the given resource, right? So I will say deploy. Now here uh, I'm going to import UUID for setting the principal ID, UUID. Okay. Now as a next step, what we need to do is we need to modify this response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this response the boolean response and here i will define response equal to i'm going to copy and paste this iam policy i will say copy and paste it over here i will do some formatting so here it is now i want to generate the principal id dynamically so principal id is basically the uh, user identification associated with the token sent by the client but uh, for now we are going to have it dynamic using uuid 
so I'm going to say UUID dot UUID four braces dot hex. Now then we have policy document version. We are going to leave it as it is statement. So within statement we have action. So the action that we want to define is the execute hyphen API colon invoke. So that looks good. Now here uh, we are within the condition. If this condition evaluates to true, then we want to allow. Now to which resource we want to allow. So that is something we need to define over here. So ARN AWS execute API, then we need to mention the region ID. So region ID is going to be the US East one in my case. So that's the current region that I'm working in US East one. Then we need to mention the account ID so I can get the account ID from here. So I'm going to copy this. Maybe paste it over here. I will copy the account ID. And I'm going to paste it over here, followed by the API ID. So now API ID we will get from the API gateways. So I'm going to click on this HTTP API. And then here you can see within API details, we have the API ID. So I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. Then we have slash stage, then the HTTP verb resource, child resource, right? So at this point of time, what we are going to do is we are going to have the wildcard over here. So we are allowing access to any stage and within any stage, we are allowing access to any resource, correct? So we will come back later and uh, we will see how we can restrict to particular stage or particular resource, okay? So this is for the allow. Now we want to also deny, right? So again, I'm going to copy this, copy, comment this and paste it over here. Now here, instead of allow, I'm going to say deny. So by default, we are going to deny. And if you want to pass any additional parameter, then you can pass it as a part of the context. I'm going to leave it as it is. Now save this and we are going to say deploy. Okay, now we are good to test. So I'm going to copy the invocation URL, click on stages. Let's start with the default stage, copy, open postman, paste it over here. I'll say test. Let's try to invoke it randomly. I'll say send, it says 401 unauthorized. Okay, looks good. And now we are going to pass the authorization header. So that's going to be the authorization. What was that that we have defined over here? I think it's the authorization token. Yes, I'm going to copy this authorization token and we are going to pass the valid code. So in my case, I have defined the secret code as the valid code or the valid token and we will say send. So now as you can see, it returns status code 200. It means it's working fine and our authorization is working fine. Correct. Now if I misspell this and if I say send, then it's going to say forbidden. Okay, looks good. Now uh, at this point of time, I can also invoke this resource using version one stage. So let's see, we are able to invoke this. Now what I want to do is I want to restrict the access to the specific stage. So to restrict the access to the specific stage, what we need to do is, so here within resource after API ID, it's basically the stage name, okay, stage variable. So right now it's the wildcard, it means all the stages are allowed to the given user or all the stages are denied to the said user. So we are going to restrict it to the version one. Same goes for the deny version one. Now while we restrict it to version one stage, we should not be able to invoke the test resource using default stage. So now if I say send, so here we are using version one stage, it's, it's working fine. Now, if I want to invoke it using default stage, and if I say send, then it's going to say forbidden. So here we have restricted the access to the version one stage. So in fact, uh, while we deny for anything, we can say deny to all the stages. We don't need to modify the policy or we don't need to explicitly define the resource that version one deny to version one. So we will say by default deny to all the stages and all the resources. Okay. So guys, this is how you can restrict the access to specific stage. Now, for example, you want to restrict the access to particular resource and the particular method. So in that case, what we can do is 
So within resource, here we have the wildcard. So this will be followed by the particular method that you want to allow. If you want to allow all the methods, then you can mention wildcard over here. So let's say at this point of time, we want to allow get slash test resource. So we want to allow the get method for the slash test resource. And if test resource has any uh, child resource, then you can specify next to the test, for example, child resource, right? But right now we don't have the child resource under test. So we are going to save this and say deploy. Now we are going to test this out. So here we have the version one slash test. So we are going to invoke it. So as you can see, it returns status code 200 and it's running fine. So now let's say I only want to allow the post method and not the get method for the slash test resource. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this get with the post methods. So here I am saying that only allow version one stage and the post method for the test resource okay so now we are going to deploy it and let's say send so now as you can see it returns status code uh, 403 that is forbidden now if i want to allow all the method then i can place a wildcard over here let's see what happens say deploy and i will say send so as you can see it's running fine Right. So if you want to allow everything, then you can place wildcard over here. So basically uh, this API ID is followed by the stage name and stage name is followed by the method that you want to allow. That is the HTTP method. And then it is followed by the resource. And then that resource is followed by the child resource if you have any. OK, so this is how you can restrict the access to specific stage, to specific method and to specific resource. So guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below. And I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And see you next time.